Hi, this is Brennan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Joel and Adam, and tonight we're going to be talking about a martial arts movie, well, martial arts science fiction film, The One Starring Jet Li. Uh, this is a 2001 science fiction action film directed by James Wong, um, and I think it also stars what J- uh, Jason Statham was in it, um, and the action chore- choreography is Corey Yuen, um, who did a lot of Hong Kong action movies and stuff. So... Uh, this was apparently my first time, I believe Adam's first time seeing it. Joel, didn't you say you, you had seen it, but then you discovered it was your first time watching it during the... Yeah, I thought I saw this. I've seen... I saw the end is what I saw, that little okay. uh, that fight scene that Jet Li has with himself. But I didn't see the rest of it. Uh, and so a lot of this movie surprised me. Okay. Yeah, I thought I had seen it too at one point because it had been described to me so well by somebody, I think in the past and so when you like you told us the plot and i was like oh i think i might have seen that but then i realized no so um uh so this was fresh for me too uh so what we're going to do is we're going to go in order leading up to joel to give our reactions to the movie then we're going to talk about some topics um well i just want to i want set expectations i want people to know you know what to what rhythm to expect here uh so for me so here's my response to the movie was that I thought it had a lot more potential. Um, You know, like, I I really thought this was like a movie that could have been like way better than it was. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. it was, it was mostly entertaining. Um, I thought it had a a interesting idea at its core. Uh, The only negative for me was that there were just some moments where I kind of started to lose interest here and there. Um, There were, you know, a couple, couple of things to do with some of the character relationships and there were a couple of action scenes where it's like the the action was fine, but something about the way it was being shot or some of the effects or something sort of disrupted it for me. But I noticed that most of those were early in the movie. So it was as the movie went on, I felt like the action, either the action got better or my eyes adjusted to whatever style they were doing. I don't know what it was. Um, and obviously it's Jet Li. So it's, you know, Jet Li is, you know, there's, uh, you know, uh, uh, this performance in terms of the martial arts was, was, was perfectly good. Um, and so, you know, that, that was, that was sort of my, uh, my estimate. There were just, there were, I was entertained, but there were some elements of it that just didn't come together for me fully. But I recognized that this was a movie that really could have been, I think a much better film. Um, so Adam, what about you? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely agree with you on the potential. This movie had a lot more potential than it actually delivered, but it's a perfectly serviceable action movie. I mean, it, my, my reaction, remembering when the movie came out, it's a movie that came out a couple of years after the matrix yeah. starring. It's which, a Hollywood which shows, movie, you can see a, that. Yeah. A Hollywood movie starring Jet Li that was made by two of the writers from the X-Files <laughs> And uh, all those elements and like being a 2001 movie, it was exactly what you would expect it to be for that yeah. time period. It's yeah. just it, all yeah. those elements. But yeah, I agree. It's like they did very little with the uh, alternate universes. I mean, you know, the the only thing they did was kind of, oh, in this universe, uh, Gore won instead of Bush, which is a thing people only cared about in 2001. Well, I think anyone, co- if I were to show that to my nephews now, they'd be like, they, they would just can, whoosh, right can over I, their I, head. I don't want to talk to you about it, but I do want to weigh in because I kind of had a different reaction to that, where I thought that was a very clever, fun way to show the difference between the universes. It, it would have been uh, fun in 2001, is my point. And I well, think sure, it would, but, it would, it's it's a plotting nothing, plotting nothing now. I think that well, I think if you weren't if you weren't alive then, it means not you, you. Even if you picked up on it, it wouldn't have any impact. No, that's it, fair. That's fair. You wouldn't know, but I still think that's like I don't know. I I can't escape the fact that I know about that. So for me, I still had the positive reaction. I, oh yeah, I'm not saying it's bad, but I, it's it's the only element. If that had been like one element amongst a whole mm-hmm. bunch of other elements, it would have been fine. I'm not saying they shouldn't have done that. I'm saying that was not enough. <laughs> yeah. And, okay. uh, and now I've lost my thought. Um, I'm sorry, I should have been. Yeah, I had a whole I had a whole monologue, but it's gone now. Um, let me see. Uh, um, let's see. You poor man. Yeah, I actually <laughs> prepared an intro for the first time ever, and it's gone now. Um, <laughs> oh no. Okay, so 
so you didn't like the the Bush Gore like face off there? I, I thought really, I'm surprised because it didn't I seem. Like, like, I liked it. I liked I, it. I liked it, but I'm saying that's the only thing I can think of that was meaningful they did between the universe. I feel like you okay. could have done so much. Like yeah, for yeah, one yeah. thing. You, one thing, like the different versions of his character could have revealed things about his main version of his character. It could have been different versions of his life. Like we know, oh, okay, and one he's a prisoner, and one, but we don't, we don't really get, we don't really get a feeling of it's, it's not revealing of his personality by bringing different versions of him in. I, I felt like yeah. it was all squandered there. Um, yeah, it's. To be fair, you probably need like an Eddie Murphy type to do that kind of uh, do that justice. Um, well, no, it's it's the writing. It's not like it's not like I needed his performance to be okay, significantly okay. different. But fighting details, it's like oh, in this life he. I mean, I don't know. It's not like it's a major factor, but there's there's just so much wasted potential on the uh, on that. I, and I guess to wrap up, I'll say. The one fundamental flaw of this movie is if you're making a Jet Li movie, the main advantage of having Jet Li is that, as you say, he is an excellent martial artist. She's going to be giving you a real physical performance. And they created a movie where his ultimate villain is a person he cannot physically fight because it has to be all special effects during the final scene, which yeah, I mean, obviously yeah. he's still, he's still able to do the moves, but it's like by making the big fight into a CGI, a, a you know, it's gotta be CGI stuff to, to trickery. It's like, yeah. well, uh, okay. It's one of those things. I don't, I, I want to get to Joel in a moment, but now you made, made a point that I kind of want to touch on, which is, it's interesting because I had a similar reaction to that, but I also was like, well, I could sort of see how they were thinking about it. And like, this is going to be amazing. We're going to have Jet Li fight Jet Li. Jet fight Li. Himself. Yeah. That was, that was the yeah. promotion. I was saying yeah. it's a promotional element. It works great. It's like, I can see how that would be the pitch. People are like, yeah, but it's like when you think a step further to actually doing, it's like, well, now we're underutilizing Jet Li's main potential by doing it. But you know, there you go. It made money. And it worked. Joel, I mean, it was good. It's not like it was bad. I just feel, ugh, I don't know. Joel, what, did you, what do you think of the movie? Um, let's see here. Well, first of all, like I said, this movie surprised me a lot. I didn't know Jason Statham was in it. And so, like, I'm watching this movie, and Jet Li is the evil Jet Li. Like, and he's shooting people. And then, like, baby Jason Statham shows up with his yeah. partner. And I was just like, <laughs> that surprised weird. me, too. It was like yeah. Muppet Babies for the, uh, for the, um, expendables a little bit um yeah. that, that was a weird moment because he's he's really young in this like i was this like one of his first roles I, I, ever because the first time i, I remember him was like him. it took me yeah, at first i didn't either yeah. i was like it's, yeah my first reaction if i'm gonna be honest with you was is this a guy richie extra i'm not clocking <laughs> it was it but it yeah. was yeah <laughs> and i when i did clock him i was like oh god and then I realized how old I was. And I just remember that. Do you ever see that meme where the guy this, just like withers in front Joel, of the camera? Like that was me. This was um, Joel, one year first before note, the transporter. I just looked yeah. it up. So my, it was my first right note, on the brink. My first note was poor man's Jason Statham. That was. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, oh. <laughs> they must have seen Jason Statham and hired this clown. And st- <laughs> oh, damn it. So go on. So, so what anyway, was your so overall this, impression? Okay, I'm, I'm giving it. I'm giving it. I just, I like that's that's kind of a microcosm for the stuff that surprised me about this movie. The Matrix stuff surprised me too. You can really see the Matrix influence here. Um, yeah. I didn't know. I, I did not know before you just mentioned it, Adam, that uh, the X Files writers worked on this. But that really makes sense having watched it. I'm like, ooh, this this feels like it's got that like kind of yeah. like t- 90s TV ish. Yeah directing yeah. and writing and it's not a bad thing it makes it maybe the coolest episode of outer limits i've ever watched um <laughs> yeah I'd, I'd say it's a strong contender for coolest episode of outer limits uh yeah. it's i like um right. i like how colorblind the movie is i like that jet lee is just a dude and they yeah. don't acknowledge that he's like chinese really i think he's he's chinese, yeah right? i like that i, I want to make sure that's right uh, but like, yeah, I think his wife speaks just like a little bit because like they're together yeah. and like so right. there's a little bit. That of was stuff. a nice touch, actually. I, I, that was one I, I part. Like that. That, yeah, 
but yeah, everyone's just like, yeah, he's just a dude. He's a he's a great dude. Uh, I like that a lot. Uh, it's it's very much almost a lost sentiment nowadays. But yeah, back in the late nineties, early two thousands, col- being colorblind was the end thing, and it was kind of refreshing to watch a movie that wasn't constantly preaching to me. Uh, yeah. So that was nice. Uh, the CG was incredibly bad, like like fantastically bad, but also of its era. You know, it's 2001 here. Like, yeah. you, you can't expect it. Not everything's going to look like The Matrix. Like, The Matrix was, like, unbelievable for the time. You know, and it mm-hmm. took a little while to plod back up to that as a kind of a standard level. So, yeah, you know, I, the CG was bad, but I think they did some good stuff with it. I especially like the scene where he's, like, picking up uh, motorcycles and smashing them into people. I thought that was fun. <laughs> And I liked some of the Matrix-ish things that were unique to this movie, like when he jumps up and he kicks people to the side, and then it pauses for a second while he's in midair and he kicks someone else, but they're kind of moving in slow motion, but he's in normal motion. I was really kinetic. Good use of Jet Li there and his his amazing kicking abilities. Uh, I really liked the fight scene with Jet Li versus Jet Li. I understand that it was a... uh, It was an Eddie Murphy situation where it's all camera tricks. You know, I, I get that. But it was well done, yeah. But they did a yeah, good yeah. job of framing at least one Jet Li going ape with his awesome martial arts at any given time. So that was really cool. Uh, and mm-hmm. I like the sparks in that last fight scene, too. They actually the sparks great. were good. I agree about the sparks. That, that was a really good shot. Um, I, I also like that the movie is not afraid to not wrap up cleanly. His wife dies. I thought she was going to come back or be okay. Nah, she gets shot and killed. And then he meets an alternate version of her. And, and, like, there's a lot of, like, little things like that towards the end of the movie where I'm like, oh, they're not just making this, like, a clean wrap-up. They're leaving some interesting frayed loose ends here. This is a more – this it gives the movie some texture to it, you know? Uh, and, like, some of it's kind of beat for beat, you know? Like, oh, the older, wiser partner dies and Jason yeah. Statham's in over his head. Oh, who saw that? Yeah. And some of it is – you kind of see what they're going for, but they failed. Like whenever Jason Statham is hanging over the edge and good Jet Li is like, I don't believe you. Tell me about the alternate universes. And he's like, <laughs> oh, I'm really hanging here. I'm not just like standing here awkwardly. Like, so some of it is that. And I'm like, I'm willing to kind of look past that just because I overall enjoyed the film. I would give uh-huh. this film a silver medal. Uh, okay. Considering all the, it, you got to put it where it is, but. Oh crap! My connection got lost. <laughs> no, okay. We, we, well, I guess we heard, we'll wait for a second then. To we, give we heard my... all. We heard all of that. Um, yeah, you were good. You didn't cut out. Oh, you just did now. I think That's you just weird. Did. Okay, yeah. must have hit a premonition. prediction of him freezing. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I mean, one thing I'll say is we looked at Rotten Tomatoes, um, and I, and hopefully Joel will get back in so we can weigh in on this one. Um, but we looked at Rotten Tomatoes after watching it, and. The critic score is 13%, and the audience score is 51%. And the 51%, oh, I'm I am, okay, so we're talking about I'm the Rotten back. Tomatoes now, Joel. And I was oh, just yeah, saying okay, how, yeah. yeah, so I was just saying the critic score is 13%, and the, yeah. the audience score is, I understand the audience score being 51, because I can see how people could kind of go either way on a movie mm-hmm. like this. I don't get the 13, 13% seems like, egregiously and i know i overuse that word but egregiously bad for no this is like, egregiously bad you're correct yeah because it, it, it's it's not like i mean when i think 13 percent, i think like bottom of the barrel straight to video well keep know, in mind what the measure things, huh? keep in mind what the measure is what critic what rotten tomatoes is measuring it's not measuring that critics rated it at 13 percent it's that 13 percent of critics gave it a mostly positive review so if if you know if 80 per, I mean, if nine if like you know around roughly 90 percent of critics go eh, i didn't care for it that much that would give it a 13 percent okay okay I mean, that's, that's, why are like a lot of people who gave it that out. way too. Is there, isn't the audience also getting that treatment in their rating or no? Uh, yeah, do we have two different the metrics Amazon here? fudging numbers, but you know, that's me. Well, but, <laughs> well either, either way, but also when I was looking at reviews, they were pretty harsh. Um, they they but, are. They I, were harsh. Yeah, they were. Right. I agree. I agree with you. Yeah, and you know what it was, and it's it's really easy to to look at this and be like, okay, I see why you're giving it that review. It's because you're a critic and it's your job. But like, okay. Oh, they've got Papa Roach music. Oh, they've got crummy CGI. <laughs> it's like they're 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 taking all the little easy. Oh, I'm a critic. This is bad, and they're just stacking them up. It's like, look, That's what I'm doing. And and yeah. full disclosure, I, mean, I was gonna I, say it's 
this is a movie where the things that are good about it are things like, oh, Jet Li's martial arts skills, which are harder to write about. It's a lot easier for me to, the th all my nitpicks are so much easier to elucidate yep. than the things I liked about this movie, because it's, they're, they're, they're it, the things I like are fairly intangible. It's like, oh, you know, but yeah, I, it, I would have, it would be so much easier for me to write a scathing review of this than to write a, uh, a positive well, that's that's why i kind of <laughs> leaned into this thing had potential because i feel like there was a lot of potential there and the things that yeah. didn't work there were sort of missteps that i i thought were somewhat understandable um but the uh the thing about the music i i, I like full disclosure i only like the lincoln park music that was on there all the other music is not to my taste um but i don't think that that like that was mentioned in a lot of reviews yep. i don't I don't really like when people do that because and again I don't like to get political or anything like this but there is like a class thing uh -huh. that kind of happens around that sort of nitpicking where uh -huh. you know me you and all my broke ass friends this is our soundtrack for 2001 yeah. right <laughs> like no you're you're not wrong about it and like dude you're not a music critic you're a movie critic like yeah, critique and, and the movie jackass and I can guarantee you they I, probably also have shitty taste in music on top they absolutely of do. sneering well, at I, that music. So. I'll go half and half. I mean, on the one hand, I agree. Most critics would not be, would, would not like this kind of music. But at the same time, I feel like you have to review music in movies. It's like you no, can't, you review, you review, you can't movie, review them. But you shouldn't immediately take someone like this soundtrack and be like, oh, it's garbage. Like, it's not. Uh, yeah. It doesn't I, fit what's well, going on. And it does. Someone, this movie's someone a popcorn old, movie. I was an old man 20 years ago. I don't know who Papa Roach is. I I don't I couldn't name a single Linkin Park song. I don't know any I did not recognize a single song in this music. But I it didn't bother me. I'm like this is not music to my taste, but it didn't I was like okay, this this does feel very 2001 even it, though it's, it's very really dated. It, it's it it definitely feels dated. I think I think with the point that Joel and I are making has the merit is that there's there there's like a very specific class thing that goes on with that style of music and that music gets rated differently than okay oh used. i take your all, point now yeah. all yeah, you like can, if it, it was all matter if it was citizen yeah, kane they make was, sure to mention the music just yeah. because of where it sits yeah, yeah no yeah um yeah if it, if also, it were like uh acoustic rock for example nobody would have even if it was bad selection yeah it wouldn't rock, have mattered nobody would have cared yeah and, and also as music selections go it was all consistent it all came from the same yes. genre um, yes. It all had a similar vibe, uh, you know. And again, a real I think consistency of tone in this movie when it comes to the music and the action, everything. It yeah. feels kind of Mortal Kombat ish. Yeah. If I'm being I, honest <laughs> with you. My, my yeah. reaction to it, I felt so when I heard the music, I thought that what they were doing, it felt kind of like Resident Evil. Remember how they had like the oh, action yeah, yeah. would instigate yes. the music, or, the, or vice versa, the music would instigate the action. And I feel like here it wasn't quite as artfully done, but I saw what they were going for, and it wasn't like it was bad. So. You know, it's, you know, again, not not my taste in music, but I don't think that uh, I, I, I don't think that um, I don't know. I feel I feel like that stuff, that style of music gets a little bit do, over do, 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 do. over shit on um, by people. Uh, and I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, where people reside and that kind of thing. So um, and also I think that it like I said, it matched the movie like the the stuff they were doing with the music matched what was going on on camera. So, um, yeah, I, as someone not into this music at all, it was fine. Didn't, didn't bother me. It, uh, but yeah, it looks like we've lost Joel again. Oh, so all right. his opinion well, on the music is, well, we got, we uh, got his, we got, we got his, we got most of his, uh, opinion there. I guess, I guess <laughs> we can still talk a little bit about the era. This definitely like to the, some of your earlier points, it definitely feels like 2001. It was a 2000. Yeah. 2001. Um, yeah, I, I uh, you know, that that was that, that, I, I don't mind that. I kind of like going back to the early 2000s for me is a period that I have fond memories of. So I kind of like watching movies from that era. Anyway, this is this is the very end of the of the of the pre 9-11 era. This is yeah. like, the, <laughs> this, you know, that's yeah. it's like, what, you know, like I said, the, you know, the the Bush Gore thing was like a huge looming thing. <laughs> yeah. Then 9-11 happened and everyone just kind of forgot that ever happened. Yeah, got, oh, we got bigger problems now. But uh, it's that that was kind of what struck me as being particularly 2001 about it, because by 2002, that just wasn't even well, on people's minds. The, the parts that felt oh, really to me were you when kill I, me again. What was that? Damn, my internet sucks right now.
Well, we can hear you now, at least. Right. But <laughs> um, there we go. Okay, can you hear us, Joe? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. Yeah, sorry, my internet here, is just garbage. Hear you right now. You go out. When you go out, we can hear you. Wow, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, is this uh, me like singing and what have you? I try to mute whenever I go out. Um. So, so yeah, I don't know. I, I, I when I noticed that it wasn't the Matrix, that's kind of when it really popped out at me. Is like, okay, this is you know, this is the era that it's started. But it it resides yeah. kind of unevenly, like that early two thousands versus that late nineties era. It's sort of like on the like you were saying on the dividing line. So yeah, they're like like the new metal to me feels a little bit more early two thousands. Do you know what I mean? Like that, uh, you know, and it is early two thousands, but still, I know what you mean. Two, early two thousands don't happen until nine eleven. Um, <laughs> so, but so, what did you guys think of the action? What were, what were your thoughts on the action? Could have used more. Honestly, I, I was surprised yeah. at how few action scenes there were, and most of them were just people shooting at each other. Surprising. Like I would, I thought there'd be more kung fu, but no, nah, it's really just Jet Li. Like, like he's the only guy that really does like kung fu fighting. I, I like that the, the older partner guy, I forget his name in the movie, uh, gets to fight with Jet Li. That was really nifty because yeah. uh, he's kind of like he's he's not like doing kung fu. He's just like Wrong. fist fighting him. I, yeah, I like that, that was fun. I liked that Jet Li was the only one doing martial arts because he is the one, and so it, it amplified his power his level. Oneness. Yeah, it was yeah. his it was his superpower in the movie. Yeah. It's, uh, um, yeah, that was that was an interesting idea that they uh, like when I heard the concept of this movie back in the day, I didn't realize that all the versions of him were getting stronger. I was like, I was thinking it would be a situation where there was this super powered version of him and the less super powered version. But it was like, oh, OK, they both both gained this ability. Which, well, I, which I also like that. I, I love that the good jet lee doesn't kill the evil one like his big line isn't like i'm gonna be yes. the one not you it's like no neither of us is the one this ain't yes. happening and he yes. lives they even do the little switcheroo thing at the end and he lives on his little his little trash planet it's great the trash planet was great i actually really enjoyed the trash planet same now, i i would was... i would have happily watched watch that movie if it's like oh jet lee on the trash planet yeah let's let's go you're, you're seeing the fun. birth of the sadu car terror troops from dune right there that's that's, <laughs> yeah, that's that where that started scene. that was a good scene um, yeah, yeah, that was that was a good that really wrapped the movie up on a high note. I've got to say. Yeah, I I liked a lot of the action. Like I said, my big complaint was that sometimes it was it felt like they underutilized him because the camera work and stuff wasn't you know quite capturing everything to my satisfaction. Uh, yeah, but I thought really? that, you know over. Oh, what was that? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, to cut oh you no, off. I was just gonna say, but overall, I, I enjoyed the action. Uh, I have Are one complaint. Stated? Uh, th before you get to your complaint, you know what this needed? I'm thinking about this. It needed a Terminator scene where you have Jet Li going up against some just thugs. It really needed yeah. at least one of yeah. those. And we didn't get it, like, ever. At the very end, you kind of get him fighting scrubs mm -hmm. on Doom Planet. But anyway, yeah. But yeah, go on to your complaint. I, I actually, I rather like that sequence, too, because you really oh, saw great sequence. his command of, like, uh, Dances and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Just like his footwork and everything. I like. We're talking see. about the trash planet scene. Still yeah, yeah, yeah. I like. Yeah. You can see. I like. The, you can see footwork. I don't know why. Uh -huh. I, got, I got to say the other thing about the trash planet. Like I, I brought up already, I feel like they really underutilized the multiple dimension element of it, and it was like that was the first time we're like, oh, hey, we're in a crazy dimension now <laughs> and yeah. and i was like oh, i kind of wish they'd been a little more interspersed throughout the movie yeah. of that kind of flavor just to make it a little more science fictiony but it's funny too yeah. because watching this after having seen everything everywhere all at once it's sort uh -huh. of it's sort of like almost a little ahead of its time because it was almost kind of going in that direction of doing something like but doing you know much more traditional well, I'd say um, here's something i just <laughs> noticed uh you know having the Wikipedia page open during this podcast, the organization that's controlling the multiverse is the MVA. And in the Loki TV show, they have the TVA, which is the multiverse controlling organization. And the producer of this movie is also a Marvel producer. And I'm like, wow. So the Loki TV series is basically <laughs> riffing off this movie. And okay. 
Like going, going to this movie's influence, though, it occurs to me, it's like, this is Highlander. This is just multiverse yep. Highlander. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's the quickening. <laughs> yeah, very strong Highlander. Fine. Very strong Highlander. Yeah. It was like, Th this Highlander is the best Highlander Matrix sequel yet. everything everywhere all Yes. Um, yeah, this, I, I will go on record and say, this is the best Highlander sequel without any competition. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, th but, but then again, <laughs> like, you know, a blank screen would be any of the other Highlander. I didn't so. say the bar was particularly <laughs> high. It's not. So, uh, but yeah, I, I uh, my, my one complaint about the action was that the MRI machine, I feel like that should have been sucking in some of the guns and things like that. Like the, it like, sucked you know, in one gun, but one, yeah. I think, okay, I must have yeah. missed that one. So if, got, if, it leaves, if they did it once, I think that's fair. I'll retract okay. my... Yeah, that was the whole point of it. They're like, they're going the so. magnet thing, the magnet thing, then his pistol gets well, sucked. I was in, eating which, during that scene, so I must have like had my head down getting my food. Well, and the problem is, it was evil Jet Li's gun that got sucked in. He was the character that least needed a gun out of anyone in that movie. It's like, it's like I, he shouldn't even need a gun. Come on. I don't like it. And there was another scene where he needed to get a gun uh, from because he was doing the old switcheroo with uh, with good Jet Li's wife. And he was like in the, yeah. in the attic and he's like, give me the gun. It's like, you don't need a gun. You can punch through a car, man. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good point there. It's, uh... Now, you had mentioned, too, how the killing of the wife was uh, was sort of an interesting threat. I agree. My only yeah. issue with that, you said you said something about loose loose ends and uh, well, I mean, they. Okay, so they they wrapped it up and that they kind of revisited it later. I honestly thought that she was gonna not die because like he shoots her like kind of in the belly and in movie logic, yeah. that's not a lethal wound. In yeah, the real world, that yeah. will kill you very quickly. Uh, uh -huh. But I was like, oh no, she's she's gonna be in a, at a hospital or something, and they're gonna reenact the movie. Hell no, he didn't even go get go back to the same universe. Hell yeah, I'm I'm in. That's great. No, I, I, I agree with you. The only thing that is that I didn't feel it, it normally in a martial, especially like a wuxia or a kung fu movie or whatever, I feel like there would have be more punch to the revenge. And there wasn't quite the same. Like, I don't know. It, it lacked a certain, I think because the relationship wasn't, it, it was I don't know. Flat. Uh, yeah, they, was, their on-screen like, chemistry wasn't amazing. Yeah, they didn't have very good chemistry, I think. I think it was that. No. I think they didn't spend a lot of time. Well, I guess they gave it adequate time for the movie it's but, got a lot of time no the chemistry was a dud on that one i think okay. that's a legitimate complaint against this yeah. movie is that and it, they're both fine actors they just didn't yeah. there was no real spark there the yeah, closest I'm we all, got is the scene where they're speaking mandarin to each other that was that pretty that that worked that worked i yeah i i really like though like when 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 people get revenge because their wife or their husband is killed like i'm on board like that's like like i'm an easy sell on that and so yeah, same. you know and so it was kind of like their revenge uh, plot to lose in my in, in, for me, um, and, and yeah, I just yeah. Like, you know, it would have been nice. Think, yeah, it, it was it was a plot beat when she got killed, but it didn't make me go, oh my god, she just or even or even if I thought I, I thought she was just hurt too because yeah. of, as yeah. you said for that reason, but it didn't it didn't it didn't get an emotional punch. And I don't I don't that. think it was all the chemistry. I think it was also the writing because I feel like yes. him doing the thing where it's like she's my center, and it was like that does not sound. That's like Is not. She? That's tell not they're telling not showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's also not how most people I don't know, it just felt like it felt like how a fourteen year old who's never been in love would write about <laughs> it. You know what I mean? Like well, yeah. well that and th there was because he doesn't just say she's my center. The way he phrases that is my grandfather said you have to find your center. So okay. I think they're trying to pull in some kind of like Eastern mysticism stuff there, and it's like, well, you either should know enough about that to write it, you know, intelligently, or you need to not do that at all. Because the way they half-assed it made it seem really not great. It yeah, wasn't. It, the, it was. It was poor writing. Yeah, it didn't work. But uh, and, and 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 I like James Wong, so you know, it's not like, um, uh, you know, I, I think that generally he's a good writer. But I just felt like in th that, not that yeah. Point, yeah. yeah, no, um, Wong and Morgan did a lot of good stuff over the years, so it's not right. a. Also, I feel like we missed it. We needed that beat where he's about to kill Evil Jet Li, and then something his wife said or did reminds him that he's not a killer. And then he's like, no, for her, I won't kill you. Like, what? that sort of needs to be there. Like, yeah. the, guy, the guy feels like a robot. His wife dies. He has one scene where he's like, Jason Statham, and he's like, I'm a loose cannon now. I might kill the whole universe. And then, like, nah, we're not going to revisit that. It's fine. It'll be fine. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, I, I did think they, they kind of hinted they were going dark, and then they didn't revisit it, and they didn't. Well, and it's not like Jet Li's a bad actor, he's a fine actor, but they gave him yeah. a lot of, like, really weird dialogue that didn't, he, he couldn't do much emoting for it, like, they gave him service dialogue, and it's like, dude, really? This is who you're giving the service dialogue to? Well, you, you know, it's interesting, it was originally written for The Rock, I believe. Um, okay, oh. I can see that. I mean, I don't know. I I don't know if it was written for The Rock, but he was originally envisioned as the star of the movie. Yep. And when you think, then when you review what you saw, it's like, oh yeah, I can see The Rock. I, I you know, yeah. The, that, I, it, the writing wise, it would make more sense there. I think that if you get if you wanted The Rock and you got Jet Li, you need to work to Jet Li's strengths, which is was a crazy martial arts yeah. and actually having a really good emotional range. Mm-hmm. What you see in other movies, but you just don't see here. So, well, that's and also, comp- I think, like, definitely you've got to lean into, like, he's very good also at showing emotions through martial arts. And so, mm-hmm. there should have been more of that. Um, yeah, especially know, in that last fight scene. Yeah. You know, I, I get that they're doing a yin yang thing, and I don't think that's illegitimate. I think that that works really well for this particular, like, story and these particular characters. But, like, I don't know. I'm not really sure what motivated evil Jet Li either. He just wants to be a god, which I mean, yeah, so do I. But like, I don't. He was intriguing. I mean, I thought he was intriguing because he he started out as a good guy, and he kind of and he went to go protect himself, and then he must have had this epiphany. I kind of didn't want to know more about it, but I I, I mean, it would have been nice. uh, well, we even have that showdown with his partner, which is that's where you put that. We got the, oh, he had to kill himself in self-defense kind of thing. But then he's got that last fight with his partner. That's when you really explain the path that he chose, you know, and they just okay. didn't. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they, yeah little they missing beats like that. There could have been some more dialogue in that. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Um, and this movie was short. This movie is like really brutally it's, short. It's one like hour and twenty seven minutes long. I yeah, think. Like, actually, was good. I think I think the length actually was a plus. I think I think they, they still could have added a lot to this movie in the time they yeah. had. One, I, I just would better you could have honestly. You, you put it. three more minutes worth of like emotional beat dialogue. Yeah, in this movie and it would be fine. It'd be it'd yeah. Be, I would go from silver medal to like you know maybe a little higher than silver medal. Silver plus one. Yeah, but no, it didn't need to be two hours. But I agree. Like, if you had a few minutes of, because mm-hmm. I don't know, you know, on the the Morgan and Wong thing and, and the other things they've done. I mean, they did the, they did that Tombs episode of X Files, the second episode with the guy who ate livers and stuff. And you think of like how people were all like really worked up, and that was super tense and exciting. And you look at this, and it's like it just doesn't have that level of of response so i feel like they could have done more well with this. their movie I writing i also with the movie writing it goes through a whole process and so who knows what exactly i, I feel like, like somewhere in that process the ability to emote got lost and it, it screwed up the emotional resonance it's, of the movie yeah there's a yeah. lot of flat emotion in the movie yep um, and, and, and I, I don't know who to. You're right. I don't know who to lay the blame on there. I don't know if it was a directing thing because we've got good actors here. I've seen Jason say yeah. a lot of stuff where he's got a great emotional range. Jet Li's got a great emotional range. Like, I don't. There's not a lot of. There's a lot of working actors in this, but like no one's bad. You know, I can't like point to someone like, oh, their performance. Not really. Performance. No, Delroy fine. Lindo's really good too. I mean, he's yep. actually a really acclaimed actor. It's, uh, yeah. uh, it's great so cast. You could have done better on the cast. I, yeah, I mean, no, there was just there was there was like a lack of connection between the characters. I don't know. Quite yeah, know I don't know. It. Um, yeah, you're it right. Like the only the only relationship that really worked was the two partners. Those are the yeah. only ones that really that one worked really me. good. Yeah. Well, everything with that older partner worked. I think. Yeah. I think that his connection with with Evil Jet Li worked really well. Same with yeah. Jason Statham worked really well. Yeah. So yeah. like, that guy was a really good glue. Um, Maybe he's the partner that survives in, in the next draft of the script. I don't know. Because <laughs> uh, wouldn't that have been more interesting if the young, like, you know, the guy you think is going to inherit the mantle gets killed. And so this old guy, this old cowboy is like, one last rodeo, evil Jet Li. I'm writing yeah. a better movie. In I don't think head. there's going to be a sequel. <laughs> there was never a sequel to this, was there? No. No. no I looked it up because there's so much sequel bait at the end of this. And I'm like, you know what? I'd, <laughs> I'd watch a sequel to this. And th- there's my recommendation of the movie. I'd recommend this because I would watch its sequel. That's how much it entertained me. I like the premise. Okay. I love Jet Li. Sold. I'm an easy I think, sell. 
Yeah, I think part of it, too, is the movie was very predictable through most of it. I mean, it's it, like I said, the, the prison scene at the end on the prison planet is exciting. It's like, oh, wow, I didn't expect to be in this. It was the first time in the movie where something was happening that was utterly unexpected. I'm like, wow, this, you know, the movie doesn't ever take you really surprising. Actually, I will give it one thing that I liked was uh, um, having the scene where uh well let's see uh ha- just ha- having the scene where the uh the you know you're you're ready for everyone to go after the prisoner well i sorry uh i don't never mind come back to it i've forgotten the scene clearly <laughs> in my head i got to think about what i'm going to say here that's okay, that's okay. I, speaking about the predictability though i think the predictability was a strength in the first back to back scenes where they go into the prison the very first ones where you have the bush and yeah. thing we yeah, talked about are, earlier yeah that's that's where i'm going yeah that i liked a lot um, because it was predictable, and then it it goes off just enough where you're like, wait a minute, oh, Jet Li's the cop in this one, and like yeah. that's how I also love that it hit, we had to hit the 20 minute mark before we saw our protagonist. It takes a lot of stones as a movie that with, that, yeah. with an hour and 20 minutes of runtime, 20 minutes of that, you don't even know who the main character is. That's yeah. a long time to float, man. Like that's a bold choice, and they did. Yeah. Well, the other thing is. Um... The the uh, oh, I forgot what my point was going to be now. Um, <laughs> my point was just that powerful people. Uh, uh, oh no, the predictability. I thought the predictability was was uh, actually in its favor because I was thinking about how confusing a movie like this could be, and it really yeah. wasn't. Yeah, it really wasn't confusing. So, you know, I, I didn't mind if things no. were I, easy to follow. I don't mean, yeah, I don't mean so much from a plot twist, crazy. Un- I, this more from a standpoint of things. You know, like I said, the ending. You know, the guy going to prison at the end isn't by itself surprised, but just having that environment and, you know, just that sense of wonder that you can get. I feel like for a science fiction movie, this had very little in the way of, whoa, here's a wondrous surprise thing with, you know, I mean, it's it just, I don't know. I feel no, like no, that's kind it, of an It definitely felt fiction. like they didn't do a lot of fleshing out of the other multiverses in ways that yeah. like, there were just a handful of moments um, and I felt like I was mostly in the same place throughout the movie. It had, it yes. had to me, one of, one of the movies that I kept thinking of, I don't know why it was Demolition Man when I was watching it. Yeah. It just kind of, uh-huh. it just reminded me of that. Um, God, and, gosh, and also, so uh, it's it, like they kept doing this thing where sometimes you'd see another person, uh, play another character from another multiverse. And, and it was like, but it wasn't immediately clear. And I think that, I don't know, I, I kind of wanted to know, hey, is that supposed to be that guy or not? A little bit more, you know. Yeah, uh, may- maybe they wanted to be fun on the second viewing or something. I don't know, but uh, I feel like that's another reason for the negative reviews. Is the as a critic, you're thinking a lot watching something, and this is a movie where it's a it's it's a perfectly good action movie. But yeah. you, as you watch it, you can think of man, this could have been an all time yeah. classic if they'd put in like twenty minutes more work on it. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah. But I also and, think that's like that the. I think that's also what leads to a lot of bad movies being made because you get critics who say like, okay, like yeah. Star Wars would have been perfect if they just, had oh, done yeah. this. you know, and then that's, uh, cause you can always come up with more like things that will perfect something. I, and then exactly. you end up with, what was the, what I, I was suppose, the, uh, but like, okay. But I mean, really the problem this movie was the budget probably. Like, if I had to point to a budget, single call for yeah. it, yeah. Nope, it nope, can't nope. be that great. Like it doesn't, this doesn't feel like a super high budget movie and it probably wasn't right. They, they probably just did this as cheap as they could. That, that happens in movies. The frustrating thing about it isn't that it's like already good and it could be perfect. The frustrating thing is it's almost great. It keeps grazing the belly of great, but it never gets yep. past good. Yeah. That's frustrating because the ingredients are there for great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it could it could have been like a classic, I think, and it, it could have been. It, you know, to me, it was like it was decent. I enjoyed it, but it it isn't something that I'm gonna like. You know, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna like remember it forever. You know what I mean? Oh, who knows? Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe tomorrow I'll be like, ah, I can't stop thinking about that movie. But well, I, 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 the premise is really good. It, it's yeah. stuck in my head because I keep thinking of better movies. You guys are hearing me do that, like. Mm. I, like the version of this movie I want is the way more cerebral version where halfway through the movie we're at where this movie ended. Right? Yeah, that's where that's what I want. I want the okay. Gonzo sci-fi stuff halfway through because they made yeah. that movie. It was called The Matrix. 
Yeah, yeah. There you you go. know, and they, they blew your mind. It's well, so much better because they had the boldness to go full sci-fi with it. And this this is more of an action movie with a generally sci-fi premise, which they could also have made because they did make that movie. It was called so Terminator. Apparently, I don't know much about it, but somebody told me that Equilibrium is maybe a good choice to watch if you want to get something that delivers on the promise of this movie. I, like I did Equilibrium look up a lot, yeah. Well, I, I, have, okay. I have been meaning to watch I that. Seen I should Equilibrium. get around. Have you to that. never seen Equilibrium? Really? No. Oh, oh make dude, it's got to be our next one. Right. Yeah, no, that's right. got to be our next one. Hold on. Joker's should we do that, or should we do? Should we do a more lauded Jet Li movie to kind of, you know, balance the scales? Of... Let, let's let's come back to Jet Li. I think Jet deserves a really good classic Jet Li movie as our next one. Yeah. But I don't want to do that one next. I want to do Equilibrium next because I think I want to see this premise done really Relates well. To this. Movie. Okay. And, okay. And the best thing is, Equilibrium is not a perfect movie. It actually got panned a lot, even yeah. though it's a solid movie. It's really yeah, entertaining I've and a classic of the movie. genre. Yeah, I, I hear I hear a mix of of people ter- just hating Ooh, on that movie. Some. People going, "No, really, it is good." Yeah. So I'm very curious to watch it myself. Is it like a Donnie Darko type situation? You know, no, no, like, no. It's it's yeah. just an action movie. This really, yeah. I, I wish I could give you a reason. To, to hate it or be super intrigued, I got to be real with you. It, it's sl- it thinks it's smarter than it really is. I'll give it that. But it mm-hmm. was uh, it's a twin. I don't movie. mind that. I don't. There, mind there that. were two movies that were, came out at really close to the same time that were I think they were made by the same people. And one of them is Equilibrium, which is the good one and generally considered the good one, even though it sometimes gets panned. The other one is Ultraviolet, which is bad. It's I remember really that. bad. I remember, but yeah, I remember Ultraviolet. Yeah, that did okay, not so land. I, well. I, I think that those are. I think I. Th- I think I turned off Ultraviolet midway through. I could see it. Yeah, I would have. Uh, I remember. I did that come out in the mid two thousands? Ultraviolet. When did it yeah, come yeah. out? It, yeah, it we came rented out right that. on the same time as Equilibrium. Oh, it's so bad. That was that um, was like my peak renting movies with girlfriend now wife. Period. Where <laughs> just caught, going to Blockbuster, getting it. You know. Um, that's a romance for the ages, right there. That's actually kind of beautiful, Brendan. Um, <laughs> I, I think pretty much everybody back then, wa- that's what they did. They watched Blockbuster. Uh, but, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. but uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Also, uh, James Wong, I, I, I really like uh, Final Destination. I know it's kind of... Yeah. No, but I <laughs> I really like that. See, that's, yeah, that's good James Wong. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, that's what he's capable of. It's like, that is... I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of a silly concept, but it's a really... Really fun role. You know what? You know what I found out about that movie the other day, which surprised me. You know the scene where the plane blows up and the windows go blowing in, like in yeah. the airport. Apparently, when they first did it, the the company wanted the explosion and the windows to go at exactly the same time, and the and James Wong and the other writer like had to fight to have a delay <laughs> because it was not just more realistic, but they thought it was going to be more impactful. And yeah. I thought that it was interesting that they, that they got that that they, they fought for it and they, they were able to get it in the movie. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't remember how, uh, how I learned that, but, uh, yeah. I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, again, I give it a middling grade, but I enjoyed it. You know, it's not like it was, it wasn't bad. I, I don't yeah. think it warrants the 13% that it got on the, the critic score. Um, and oh, I think the 51%, you're... I think that's an act. Like when I saw that, I was like, yeah, I can see that. Like some people are going to like it, some people are not going to like it. Yeah, that's, that's I think reason. that's an um, accurate audience reaction. I would imagine. And I'm back. Oh, so yeah, hey. we're just we're just signing out, Joel. I was just saying, you know, I gave it sort of a middle of the road review. You know, I was entertained by it. Um, you know, you know, but it wasn't like my favorite. But I felt like the that that thirteen percent score was really not. A fair that's unnecessary and, totally uncalled for yeah. and i thought that the, the 51 percent score made sense because i'm like i can see people having either kind of in a reaction like me or a more positive or a negative one but kind of falling on either side um so i you know i think that's a more uh, yeah better no, this this was not to this was a movie you know yeah. i i just there's no reason to hate this it's perfectly fine yeah mm-hmm. yeah no, it's I, definitely I, not a movie to hate. It's uh, yeah, I, if you're no. a Jet Li fan, yeah, go go watch it. Definitely, you're going to enjoy it. It's 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 uh, it's solid. 
Yeah, it, it, really, the last fight scene ties it all together for me. Like, <laughs> I, yeah. it, it does. Like, until the last fight scene, I was pretty lukewarm on it. Last fight scene with Jet Li versus Jet Li going completely ham on himself. Okay, I, I'm sold. Everything after that, during that and after that point, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I, I was of two minds in that scene. Like, I, 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 I really enjoyed you the now? concept. Well, I enjoyed the concept of it. Um, and I liked the action, but I did kind of agree with Adam's point, which was th- it was a little hard to have him fight with himself uh, yeah. in terms of just the logistics of it, it seems. So it was kind of, um, again, I think it, 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 it lost impact that it might have had if there were like two actors there together, if you know what I mean. Agreed. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's a little bit Rock'em Sock'em Jet Li, too, because he, yeah. he fights himself and then he, the other him staggers back and goes, okay, now it's my turn. Yeah. And then we just switch <laughs> sides. Uh, right? one, one cool thing, too, is apparently he was doing two slightly different styles of martial art for each of the characters, um, uh-huh. which is kind of Tai Chi. Um, no, Chi's it was, um, hold on, I got it written down. No, he here. didn't use it in that, but he knows it. You could see, like, good Jet Li yeah, did a was, lot of the flowy movements. Yeah, he I, was in Tai Chi Master, if you want to see, like, his... I, he did do I, one move I recognize, which is wave hands like clouds. Uh, everybody does that one. If well, you I know, don't know Tai maybe, Chi Chuan, everyone does that one. Maybe maybe oh, this is... I, I don't know if this this is maybe part of Tai Chi, but he said, like, Yu Law does... Um, and it, I don't remember the word, but it translates into shape, will, fist. And Gabe does something called eight trigram palms. So, you know, I, I don't know if those are styles or different techniques but um i thought i thought it was interesting that they did that kind of detail with the two different characters in that fight yeah. um i think you know that that adds something to it i think um but yeah so i guess we'll we'll head out and i guess so next time we're doing equilibrium is that the uh heck yeah yeah equilibrium i'm excited now okay and it'll right, be so fixed by then we'll, we'll do equilibrium and until next time we will talk to you later